and welcome to Dean Park. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm Dave Watson and I'm the creator and builder of the Dean Park station layout. This video is going to be one of my spotlight videos, which means I'm going to take a look at an existing piece of rolling stock that I've got or something that I've just added to the layout. Looking at it closely, giving my verdict, a bit of background on the actual prototype and basically saying what I think um, about what it, what it does, how it looks, how it operates, the detail and just basically the general finish of the product. Well I hope you enjoy the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up by clicking the icon below and if you're not already a subscriber to Dean Park, click on the subscribe button below as well. There's an icon at the bottom right of the screen, which if you click on that it'll take you through to my Dean Park channel where you'll see an array of previously uploaded videos. Um, I've even got some playlists there as well, separated into say um, running sessions, how-to videos, real train footage, model reviews and layout updates. So there's something for everybody in there, so if you click on the icon at the bottom right of the screen, it'll take you through to my channel. Thanks again, enjoy the video. The Hornby Class 56 is probably one of Hornby's best modern image diesels. It's right up there with the, the 50 and the Class 60 as Hornby's finest retools that they did way back in the early 2000s. It's really when Hornby were at the top of their game. They also introduced the HST around about that time as well. The models were second to none, the detailing was superb, and the quality that was coming out of the Sandakan factory in China was, you know, top notch. Okay, I'm going to start by looking at the box, this um, super detailed Hornby Class 56. I hope you can hear me, by the way, over that um, blackbird sitting on top of my roof just now. It's not shut up all night. Um, I'm competing against a bird. So uh, I hope you find what I've got to say a bit more exciting than its um, ramblings. This is standard Hornby box from the early 2000s with the, the photographic artwork on the front there. And it's you can tell it's one of the super detailed ones because at the time Hornby were using the super detailed icon on their packaging. The packaging itself, I've taken the logo out just before I start the video, the packaging itself was the, the foam type before they moved away from that to the more clamshell all plastic. Whilst the foam is good, the model tended to move around in it a little bit and you know rub against parts of the foam which actually create a small sheen on some of the paintwork which I'll go through in my review. So they've gone away from this two-piece foam held together with plastic band around each end and this kind of vacuum formed representation of the, the contours of the local. One thing with this box as well, when you had the foam in it, it was a nightmare to try and actually close properly because the foam and the, the plastic, should we say, protector there, the thing that hold it all together, got stuck and it, you couldn't quite get this red flap into position very well. So, a positive move that they've changed the packaging. Before I look at the actual Hornby model, I'll give you a bit of background on the, the Class 56 locomotive. This is a British Rail Class 56, and it was designed for heavy freight work. It's a Type 5 locomotive, and it's powered by a Ruston Paxman power unit given 3,250 brake horsepower and it's got a Coco wheel arrangement. The fleet of these locos was introduced between 1976 and 1984 and there's been 135 examples manufactured. The first 30 locomotives 56001 to 56030 were manufactured in Romania but these suffered from poor construction standards and many with, of them were withdrawn early for extensive rebuilding before entering service again. The remaining 105 locos were built by British Rail Engineering Limited, or BREL, at their Doncaster and Crew Works. Enthusiasts nicknamed them Gridirons, or Grids for short, due to their grid-like horn cover on the locomotive's cab ends, which were fitted to 56056 and onwards. When specifying the Class 56, British Rail chose a body shell similar to that of the Brush Class 47. 
minus obviously some obsolete features such as the head code panels. When introduced, the Class 56s were arguably the first of the second generation of UK diesel locomotives. In service, the Class 56s proved to be a strong and capable locomotive and less prone to wheel slip than, say, the Class 58s. However, maintenance needs were high by modern standards and notwithstanding significant investment by Transrail and Load Hall in their Class 56s in the 1990s, the class would not compete with the more modern Class 66 in, term, in terms of availability and just general maintenance costs. It also had to compete with the Class 60s as well. The current operators of the Class 56 are Colas Rail and GB Rail Freight. In April of this year, GB Rail Freight announced that they were going to rebuild 60 of their locomotives um, and they're basically going to be reclassified as Class 69s. And these are expected to enter service in 2020. So it'll be interesting to see if Hornby react to this new um, class of locomotive and tweak the 56 that's currently in the range to give us an all new Class 69. What strikes me every time I pick the local up or take it out of its box is the sheer weight of the local. It really is a weighty beast. Um, that gives it excellent traction and it can easily pull all 25 of my HEA hoppers with, with coal loads right round the layout and up one of the inclines as well. So it's really got good traction. I suppose just like the real thing, it doesn't suffer from much in the way of wheel slip. Looking at the face of the 56, Hornby really have captured this model superbly. Um, it really does reflect the prototype in, from every angle. The detail on the front is also really impressive. I've fitted the buffer beam detail here, but as standard, without the extras fitted, you know, you've got the picked out handrail on the bottom of the, the windshields, you've got the grab rails at each side beside the lights, you've got the separately fitted jumper cables, you've got the characteristic grid shaped horn covering in, in the middle of the the nose which obviously gives the the class its nickname. You've got separately fitted windscreen wipers, there's an interior of the cab that's very well um, detailed and, and, and put together. You've got, if I move it slightly to the side, you've got sprung cab doors which I always think are a bit of a gimmick, but you know, on this particular model they shut and they're totally flush with the side. I've had occasions with other Hornby eh, models where when the door shuts it leaves a bit of a gap, but this is spot on. You've got the, the picked out plate there underneath the door, and again separately fitted handrails picked out in white. Moving round to the side of the loco, this is all etched, so you can actually see into the, the workings of the loco and um, you've got etched parts on the, the cantrail area here as well. The bogies replicate the real thing. Um, they're, 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 they're heavy looking, they're powerful looking and they're purposeful. There's also separately fitted sand pipes which are, are wire, which you probably can't see because it's sitting on the, the black surface there. And obviously this being one of the, the originals, it's picked out in the BR blue with the the BR arrow halfway along the, the side of the body. Look at the number 2 end, it's, it's the same again. Excellent detail. Obviously I've got the coupler fitted here, so I've not fitted any of the buffer beam detail. It's got um, the usual sprung buffers, and these are metal uh, buffers. This particular model, 56082, um, it's a, one of the, the crew Doncaster built ones. It's not one of the imported ones, so this wouldn't have suffered from the reliability issues that the, the original batch did. Earlier on I mentioned that the foam packaging could rub against the local and kind of shine the paint up a little bit. I'll hopefully be able to show you an example of this. Um, I don't know how well the camera's picking up under the light, but there's a kind of shiny area about here where the the box rubs against the, the top of the loco and it's at both ends so it's clearly a packaging issue so I'm hopeful that you know Hornby have gone 
to the clamshell packaging as they have progressively done with the rest of their locos to um, prevent this in future releases. Bearing in mind it's a 2013-2014 release. This gives me a good opportunity to show you the, the roof fans here. Very finely etched uh, metal covers there. Again, the build quality at this area of the local is spot on. There's no glue marks or any, any flaws at all with the assembly of these parts. These fans are powered by the means of a kind of rubber band mechanism joined to the, to the motor but it just actually impedes the running of the local. So the best thing you could do is just snip the rubber band and get rid of it. That blackbird's still on the roof, you know. I mean, goodness me, can I just go on, you know, the blackbird version of Tinder or something instead of whistling on the roof all the time? I don't know. So, this is when you really get a sense of how heavy the local is, you know, when you're, when you're handling it. If I look underneath here, they are the, the separately fitted uh, sandpipes there. Okay, there's four in the center and two at each end under the, the cab. The coupler for this is on a kind of cam, a kind of spring, and that allows it to navigate tighter curves with some um, you know, freight behind it. I know that there's been some issues with the coupling design on the Hornby Class 60 where it can cause the derailments of the, the stock it's pulling but I've not touched wood had any issues with the Class 56 doing that. Just a quick kind of overview of the actual finish of the model. It's picked out in a nice BR blue, there's not too much in the way of issues between the the lines between the yellow and the blue, or the odd bit of hazing um, around the, the paint edges which is a bit annoying at times. This model was released, I say, 2013-14 and it was going through the phase where Hornby were having issues with their quality control and I've had models that have appeared that there's been so much overspray or underspray shall we say because some of the model wasn't even painted correctly but I've been I've been lucky with this particular model that the only thing I've got to really moan about is the, the sheen and the rubbing bits on the top of the cab roof. Another thing you've got to watch out for with the Class 56 from Hornby is that the lights are connected through kind of copper like pickup wipers um, and they connect to the, the chassis so when you put the body on you've got to make sure that they're making a connection. So it's a bit hit and miss sometimes where the lights work. So you've got to be careful with that. Maybe in future releases Hornby will address this just like they've done with the, the Class 50 issues. I know the Class 50 has, has had issues with the, the domino kind of you know marker lights or the head code lights at the top not working always. Similar can happen to the, the Class 56 with the, the brass pickups, the wiper type things that to take current to the, the LEDs. But I'm nitpicking, I mean, this, you know, it's, it's a good, a very good model.
Well that's it from Dean Park just now. I hope you liked it. If you have, please click on the like icon below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe button. If you want some more content from my channel, click on the icon at the bottom right hand side of the screen. Or if you want to see something from the Network Southeast region, the link to Everard Junction's videos will follow this clip. Cheers just now.